How long time is it that we've uh, known each other? Uh, we have known each other since you were 13 years old. And I was 15, so I was, uh, I was a little bit bigger than you. So when is it that you turn 50? That is uh, <laughs> in about uh, 10 days. <laughs> okay. <sighs> <laughs> I'm still a, I'm still. Can you say a spring rabbit? No, that. No, was, you're uh, a spring chicken. I think. Spring chicken. Yeah, that's what you are. <laughs> <laughs> that describes you quite precisely. Cool. I really, really like the bronze age stuff. Uh, yeah. Um, and I can, I, I can feel this pull towards. Like now, Viking things have been so popular for so long. Uh, but a lot of the stuff that is now called Viking, it's sort of uh, in the beginning of the Christian era here, mm. and and so you see remnants of of older, more powerful things. But as soon as you go back, mm. early Iron Age, Bronze mm. Age, it, it it's this yeah. completely different worldview that yeah, yeah. kind of comes through the uh, the. Uh, immense use of spirals. Um, yeah. Uh, very Celtic, right? Um, yeah. Latin, uh, Celtic Latin yeah. style has yeah. a lot of the same language. This is so much closer to the feeling of uh, the indigenous peoples of, of Scandinavia. Yeah. Så det er sådan lidt, når du står sådan her, og lige har øh, din kater færdig, så skal, min være, præcis, så skal det være en, der bare tænker, føler sådan en ring der. Ja. Ikke? Og når du står almindeligt, så skal ja. man også bare tænke, de, de ligger lige her, du skal klart. Nu er jeg selvfølgelig blevet opmærksom på det nu, når vi taler om det, så lægger jeg selvfølgelig mega meget mærke til det. Mm. Øh, spørgsmålet var, om man skulle bygge, hvis du siger, at det bliver mindre tydeligt, hvis det bliver lidt kortere. Ja, man kan sige, at jo længere, det bliver også mindre tydeligt, jo mere ligebændet af trekantagtigt ja. ja. Men jo længere og tyndere den her lange spids bliver, ja. jo mere vil det ja, 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 ja. Så man kunne, hvis man laver det lidt mere bumet og lidt kortere, så bliver det lidt mindre tydeligt. Ja, men spørgsmålet er, det gør noget. Ja, ja. Øh, hvis de er placeret rigtigt, synes jeg ikke, det gør noget. Nej. Fordi så ser det faktisk fedt ud. Ja. Så, så, så. Ja, okay. Klart. Jeg tænker mig ikke lige over. Ja. Altså det der med, at den virkelig changerer under armen. Det er faktisk godt. Ja. 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 Fordi de for det første har sådan en vild ordentlig form. Den er jo ikke, den er jo ikke på nogen måde rørende. Den er en gule her, som bliver tyndere, og en anden en her, der bliver tyndere. Men det der så også er spændende, det er heroppe, der sidder det det samme sted, og hernede, der kan den dreje. Så, øh, så du har lige sådan en karklud, der bliver reddet, ikke? Så at lave ting, der kan altså det er en, det er en helt oplagt tanke at lave ting, der sådan kan høre parallelt med armen, fordi ja. det ser best sejt ud. Ja. Og det er bare sådan ja. næsten umuligt at pulle det op. Du, ja. altså, du kan i hvert fald ikke gøre det matematisk rigtigt, du kan gøre det visuelt. Så ja. Ja. It looks like uh, many of these little zigzag lines and these ornaments. Uh, they, they. I mean, to my to my eyes, maybe it was just because, just because I looked at them for the purpose of tattooing. But they, a lot of it, really. To me, some of it really begs to be tattooed. <laughs> yeah, 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 completely. Uh, and uh, and it, it it will it will look cool in a very different way. It's, I think it's so interesting. It's almost like. At a certain place or a certain way of connecting with the world around you creates 
an artistic language that then seems to be the same, like, like all over the world. Two times, no, that's not two, three times in my life, I have been so intensely struck with the feeling of destiny that, that I basically had a feeling I was at, at a crossroads and if I took the, the safe normal road, I would basically slowly start dying. If I took the scary road, which would be the right road, I had no idea where it would lead, but that was the destiny road. Mm. So I have this, this uh, theory, that is nothing original, but that courage is like, it is this core, core thing that you need to practice because mm. in your life you will meet these things and courage will make the difference between mm. whether you dare or not. Yeah. Uh, so the first time I had just finished my graphic design education and I was um, through a dream uh, basically told go to Scotland and find a teacher uh, and that that was such a scary thing to do I had no money and uh, everyone else went out and took out uh, took all the graphic designer jobs that I didn't really want but it kind of seemed like the thing you were supposed to do right um, and I came back from Scotland about a year later and was still searching for my destiny. Uh, maybe it wasn't a year. Anyway. I'm not sure. Uh, and when I found out that uh, Dan Church 8 was doing uh, humanitarian demining programs around the world, that was the second time I was mm. struck by this crazy feeling of destiny and I must do this. Uh, and and yeah, as you mm. know, because you also ended up <laughs> doing it <laughs> for about five years. And then, uh, yeah, the third time uh, I was struck by this, this, uh, um, this feeling of this, you must do this or die, mm. was uh, at another sort of um, crossroads in my life where you were the one that said, hey, you know what you should do? You should be making Viking tattoos. And when yeah. you said that, I felt like yeah. that's it. We have really, really entangled our life yeah. stories. Yeah. Like you went to Ingushetia first, and then to Eritrea. You brought me into Dan Church Aid. I came to Sudan, and then after that, Angola, where you had been. Yeah. And then, yeah. Damn. Yeah. I, I realized at some point that there is a, something special happening in the tattoo situation. Mm. And this is in, in all the tattoo situations. And I know if everyone out there that has, has tried it, they will recognize that this uh, transformative, uh, special thing that happens in the situation between the person tattooing and the person being tattooed. And uh, yeah. I, I actually feel like every tattoo uh, that is being made, I can maybe take credit, if you will, for one third of it. Mm. One third is the client themselves and one third is the other. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Yeah. That's very relational. It's, it's, it, that's entang entanglement. And I just remember thinking this special thing that's happening in the situation if we can build more uh, mythology onto it. Mm. Um, I, 
was very inspired by the, the sort of Polynesian, which is a very broad term, but but um, the, the tradition in the Polynesian islands of using tattooing as a storytelling tool, as a, oh. a way of making blessings, as a um, initiation uh, thing oh. or marking different uh, points in your life. And I was just thinking, hey, we have everything we need oh. here to do that. We have oh. uh, our whole mythology, we have the runes, we have the sagas, we have the stories. Mm. We have, uh, An amazing visual language. Yeah, exactly. Like when you look at ornaments from the, the Iron Age, uh, Viking Age, Bronze Age, it's an absolutely mind-blowing yeah. visual expression. And uh, they just expression. Keep, keep finding more. Yeah, yeah you, can, you can sense, e even if it's just a taste of the world these people, this living world yeah. that these people were in, yeah. uh, where an interaction with the world was, was absolutely essential. And we've forgotten that. Yeah. And oh. where the world is like this web of beings, yeah. powerful, beautiful, and dangerous beings that yeah. are kind of... Yeah. Yeah. And it still is. Mm. So that just means if we're unaware of this, we just become victims of it. Yeah. Or we fuck up our relation yeah. uh, with the world around yeah. us. kigger på det, så tænker jeg, at selvfølgelig kan jeg godt dreje det, jeg kan se det, men jeg synes, det altså man bare har den der fornemmelse. Ja, den der fornemmelse, som du mener, ikke også? Ja, præcis. Prøv, det er så svært. Altså, det er lige, ja. Lige præcis på det der sted på kroppen. Ja, det er måske det allermest kommunikt, der er jo det. Ja. Og på overarmen, fordi højre og på underarmen, meget, meget nemt. Ja, klart. <laughs> To me, for someone to take charge and say, I want to mark myself in a certain way. I want to uh, mark myself in a way that visualizes strength mm. or this this uh, being that I feel I have a relationship with or, uh, or this, this drive that I have mm. inside mm. of me. So for a person to take that step is a person starting to take charge of their own life, mm. right? Mm. And then through the whole uh, ritual, I almost said because it is a ritual, but but the actual tattooing process, there is the element of sacrifice. The person has to pay some money, that's a sacrifice. But way more than that is the sacrifice to let go of the control. You take the pain, you go through the, through this, this whole thing and then you have earned it, mm. right? You, have you give up some of your body. Yeah. You basically yeah. give up some of your body, or you 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 scar yourself, right? Yeah. Uh, and it's very easy to make the jump to uh, Tyr sacrificing his hand to Fenrir to create a pact with this chaos force yeah. that was part of him, yeah. or, or they become one. Yeah. Um, he finds himself in the sacrifice. He becomes Tyr. Yeah, the the missing hand. That is the hand that holds chaos. So yes, yeah. as a holder of chaos, it is his giving that defines his divinity. Exactly, and he basically wasn't there until he did that, yeah. kind of, right? And Odin with his eye, and uh, uh, Thor has a, a piece of stone mm. stuck in his forehead. And, uh, Thor gives up his masculinity when, right. the, when the hammer is taken, 
and then he receives it almost like a like a female bride receiving the yeah. hammer in, yeah. in as he's being married to it's an extremely queering story that one yeah. but it's also giving up of of of, of yeah uh, you're defining finding your defining thing by giving up some of your yeah. uh, that's that's uh, the main reason why I insist that all tattoos are hand drawn directly on the body for the person on the day yeah. like uh, no one gets to see a sketch in advance. That's not the point. Mm. Uh, that means that every day we go into the studio and it's it's potent with uh, what's going to happen today. Yeah. Uh, so, of course, I also pray. We both have a religious practice, right? So, so I pray, I ask for help every day. The help comes and the air is, is thick with yeah. this okay now we are on the we're on the border between between worlds yeah yeah exactly i remember feeling this in your studio yeah that you come in here and you can feel that boom, almost yeah. as in a in in a in a charged ritual space that yeah. there's a there's a real a presence of of uh, spirits and spirit and what's going on yeah and it has to be like that if if one day no one wants that anymore that's fine then i'm yeah. done it's okay <laughs> One thing that's incredibly interesting about uh, tattooing is that that uh, it plays such an important role. I think, I think there's almost a a global animist movement uh, in the process where people from all kinds of cultures and settings are sort of turning towards root cultures of different kinds. And tattooing plays a role. Mm. You know, like it plays a role for the Inuits. Uh, with uh, Maya Sia looks like monumental work to mm. recover Inuit tattooing traditions. Yeah. And uh, I don't even know what it's like for the Maoris and who have strong tattooing traditions already. But I've seen it in other Native Americans as well. And if you visit a place like uh, the, the Mugos Blood Festival, where a lot of the sort of Norsal-centric Vikingophile people are, are gathering, then it's like actually part of the Mugos Blood Festival is like a tattooing convention. Mm. And everybody are tattooed all over the place. And uh, it seems to play an important role, this changing of your body is kind of channeling. I mean, what you're talking about here is on a very individual uh, level, but it's also like as if people are choosing signals, uh, changing their bodies in ways. And this is also why I don't think this is a fact, because when you're carrying these marks on your body, they're not they're going to stay. Mm -hmm. And that that means that, well, it's it's it. it it will be feeding into people's understandings of themselves. I've been thinking about with these spirals, what does it mean? Why why do people make spirals? Because as you said, you see this in Latin, uh, this spiraling sort of intuition. Or... Yeah, and these are double spirals. So yeah. they um, they remind me of the the dancing dancing mazes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. So you dance all the way in, and then you dance all the way out again, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you never step in the same place twice. That is an amazing point. Yeah, yeah, totally. So it's basically, I don't know, picture of life, yeah. or overgangsride, or, um, yeah. or... Rite de passage, transition. Yeah. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> that's, that's, uh, uh, that's at least the associations I get with it, but obviously we cannot... Yeah. Uh, I remember and the, the interconnectedness, of course. Yeah. Because if you analyze this spiral, it's not actually touching. Yeah. But they are so interconnected, they yeah. become one, but they're yeah. not actually touching each other, the two parts, right? Yeah, these ones are basically two spirals yeah. that are interlinked. The they just look at each other. Yeah. Like this. Uh, oh, that's pretty amazing. I actually didn't notice that. The uh, I've been thinking about the Maori uh, thinking with spirals. I think they have a lot of spiral ornaments as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember reading somewhere that the the underlying uh, the underlying idea would have been basically uh, an, an interlacing or an entanglement between destructive and creative 
sides of life or aspects of yeah, life. So basically the two are, aspects of life. Yeah. Yeah. You're either growing or you're exactly. getting yeah. smaller. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> you're either fucking or getting killed. Yeah, that, that's that too. Yeah, same thing. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it is the same thing, right? Either you're making life or you're ending your own. I don't know. <laughs> So, a year ago when I went through my initiation and I, I, we're not allowed to talk about what happened, but I think I'm allowed to say it's one of the hardest things I've done in my life. Um, I was told, go home, build a temple. Mm -hmm. But this temple that I'm supposed to build is also going to be our tattoo studio. Mm -hmm. Because my holy work, mm -hmm. if you will, is to make tattoos every day. So mm -hmm. every day I'm being the priest I'm supposed to be mm -hmm. through the work I'm doing. Yeah. Calling, you could almost say. Yeah. So uh, that's that's what's going on right here. Mm -hmm. I was also told that there must be five workstations. Mm -hmm. uh, and it puzzled me at the time because we were two here. But now, in the last year, other people have sort of uh, come. And, mm -hmm. and because they seemed right and the time seemed right, uh, yeah, so right now we have five people here uh, tattooing, um, but more people just attached and, and getting involved. Uh, and so I have this crazy experience now that I was tasked with building this temple. I had no idea where the resources and energy would come from, but now I can just see it's, yeah. it's kind of coming. Yeah. It's, it's kind of, there's, there's this help is coming. Uh, and it's amazing. It's still like, yeah, yeah. I I don't know how we'll get there, mm -hmm. but but we're moving forward all yeah. the time. So yes, the idea is we are uh, we are building this uh, well uh, sacred space, mm -hmm. I suppose, or I don't know how you say it in, in English. Hill. We we're, we're sanctuary. We are, we are trying to build this this uh, channel this this. Uh, place which is a little bit outside the the culture that's going mm. on right now uh, like where we actually keep the channels open yeah 